Welcome to a code report video. My name is Connor and in this video we're going to be building up the famous John Conway's Game of Life in APL, which famously to some extent is said to be doable in a single line of code. So we're going to be walking through this with a detailed explanation of how to do this in APL. And note that this or a very similar video to this was done by John Scholes several years ago. And that video is only seven minutes long, so it goes very quickly. And the goal of this video is basically going to do the same thing, but with a little bit more explanation and to show all of the code at the end sort of uh, adjacent to each other to see how much code is really necessary to get this up and running in APL. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build up a function called life init, which we are going to use to initialize our game of life board. And the first thing we need to do for that is to create our dimensions. So we're going to have our width twice as long as our height. So we're going to just multiply a single value, which will be our input argument. So there's several ways we could do this, but for our purposes, we want a function that just takes a single argument and we multiply this value or argument by uh, the array one, two, which is going to give us four, eight, because we have rank polymorphism. So you can multiply uh, scalars by vectors. So the dimensions of our matrix or our game of life board are going to be four by eight. The next thing we want to do is we want to initialize uh, our board and we're going to use that using a function called shape. So we have our dimensions on the left and our value. So we're going to populate our matrix with the value two, which will be explained in a second. However, if we hit enter, this code is not going to work uh, because we evaluate things right to left. So what this is actually doing is it's going uh, for shape two, evaluating this and then trying to multiply the result of this with uh, the array one, two, but you're getting a uh, left and right argument shapes don't match. So that's because we need to parenthesize what is on the right here. And if I put our shape algorithm back, this will work and give us our four by eight matrix of twos. Note that uh, I prefer actually to do the following, which is use the commute operator on shape because this is one less character. So what this does is basically it just swaps the left and right arguments so that we get the parenthesized expression that we had above, but with one character less. And once we have this, all we need to do is uh, apply the roll function, which is basically going to give us uh, random values in between 0 and n minus 1, where n is equal to 2 here. So we're just going to get random zeros and 1s, which is exactly what we want for our initial game of life board. We just want a random matrix of zeros and 1s. So at this point, we're basically done. We can give this function a name. We'll call it life init, assign it. And we just want to replace the single value four with omega, which is going to be the argument to our single argument function here. So if we do this, now we can call life init four. We get the same thing, but we can replace four with 10, and then we get a larger matrix. So first function down, and we're moving on to our second function, which is going to be our life iter function. So this is typically the one liner that APLers refer to when talking about the game of life. So. Um, the first thing that we want to do is just save a small matrix uh, into X so that uh, we can play with this because we need to be able to show the sort of iterations or the next generation. And in order to calculate what the next iteration or generation of this board is, is we want to count up the number of neighbors that each cell has. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to rotate this board, uh, a single row slash column in every single direction. So a, a one rotate, if we're given uh, the values one to five, uh, a one rotate on this is going to basically take the zero and rotate it to the end. So it shifts everything to the left and anything that falls off the left goes at the back. So if we do a two rotate, it's going to put zero one at the end and then the start of our list is two, three, and four. Um, and so we can do this not just on an array, but also on a matrix. So if we have X here, our first column is 0, 1, 1, 1. If we do a 1 rotate on X, that 0, 1, 1, 1 column is now at the end. So everything shifted left by 1, and then everything that fell off the left pops back to the back. Uh, so what we want to do here is we want to do a 1, 0, and negative 1 rotate for each of our, mat our, our values in X. Uh, which needs to be enclosed here. So what this is going to give us basically is a one rotate, a zero rotate in the middle, which is a no op, and then a negative one rotate, which is rotating one to the right. Um, and if you sort of pause this video, you can uh, verify visually that this is what's happening. So here we have sort of the left and right rotations, and now we need up and down rotations. And we can do the exact same thing by taking this one, zero, and negative one, and now doing, instead of a vertical rotate, a horizontal rotate, which 
uh, is this character here. And you'll note that basically these are visual representations of what's happening. So uh, there's a vertical line through the circle here because we're rotating vertically, and there's a horizontal line through the circle because we're rotating horizontally, which is super neat. Uh, due to the fact that we're applying this rotate to a matrix or a nested array, we basically have to do an outer product, um, which is going to be just the jot dot. So when you compose this, it's basically going to do this, oper this uh, horizontal rotate with each of our uh, arrays in our nested array above. So when we do this, if we zoom out a tiny bit so this all fits on one screen, we're going to end up with a 3x3 three three matrix with rotations uh, in every single one of the left, right, up, down, and then also sort of like northeast, uh, southwest, etc. And the matrix right in the middle is basically the no-op. And once we have this, all we need to do is do a summation of all of the values uh, column-wise and row-wise. So if we do this uh, column-wise, we use the sort of columnar reduction here, and we can do then a row-wise reduction, and then we end up with basically a count of all of the uh, neighbors um, that uh, exists for each cell in our original matrix X. And the rules of Conway's Game of Life are that uh, any cell with three neighbors, whether it was a dead or alive, becomes alive in the next iteration. And any cell with uh, four neighbors that was previously alive is also alive in the next generation. So what we care about here is the values three and four. So we can turn this into a Boolean matrix where all of the ones correspond to either three and fours uh, with the following operation. And sort of the threes are in the left and the fours are in the right. And now what we want to do is a logical reduction. So all of the threes, because we don't care about what the value was in the previous iteration, are going to uh, exist in the next iteration. So we want to create a two by one nested array here that we're going to do a, a, a logical and with what we're seeing on the screen here. And for the fours, we want it to be uh, a logical and with the previous iteration, which currently is x. So this is what we're, we're going to do a logical and on the two nested arrays here. So uh, what this is going to look like is doing a 1x logical and. And if you pay close attention, everything in the left uh, subarray of our nested array is going to be the same, but we're going to see a few of the uh, ones in our right array of our nested array uh, disappear. So sure enough, all of the ones are still there, but you can see in the bottom row of our right array, uh, we previously had um, two ones up here, but now we only have one one because uh, this was a zero previously, so it needs to exist in the previous iteration in order to exist in the next iteration. And now that we have these values, we basically can do a uh, logical or on both of these. And that will be all of these cells that are living in our next iteration. And we can actually very cutely combine this logical or out here with our uh, logical and in here and turn this into a inner product. And we're going to get the exact same result. And then we all we have to do is disclose this. And then we have our next iteration. So we can put this all into a function called life iter. And we just need to replace our x with omega like we did before. And now we have our life iter function. So if we go back in time to get our life init, um, we can see these two right next to each other. And then life iter is here. So now we have uh, basically the two functions that we need in order to perform this. Um, so there's only two last things that we need to do. We need to initialize the pictorial version of our board. So right now we have ones and zeros, but what we want is an actual picture. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to index into a two character string where a period represents a dead cell and the rotate symbol represents an alive cell. And we can index into this uh, just by basically passing a uh, array, which we're going to get by calculating life init and the number of uh, uh, our dimension that we want. So we'll start with uh, 10 here, because that's a small number. And the uh, assignment, sort of inline assignment here, is so that we can reuse this value uh, in order to animate it on the next line. And so if we do this, what we can do here is we can uh, go Shift Enter in our ride editor. And this is going to pop up a sort of visualization of what our initial board looks like currently. We will get rid of this for the moment, but we'll bring it back in a second. And so now we just need to come up with an expression that is going to basically apply the uh, life iter function and update that uh, matrix that we just saw there. So the way we're going to do this is we are going to build up uh, a function uh, that starts off by applying life iter to omega. 
and uh, then we're gonna put a, stat a statement separator in here and we basically want to assign to life um, the updated uh, values. So once again, indexing into our uh, two character string here using omega. And uh, in order to make this basically repetitively ap apply, we have to apply this trick where we're using the power operator and then the match function and then uh, put t off to the right here. And the only thing we have to do after this is just add one extra expression in here, which is basically a delay operation because otherwise this thing is gonna run way too fast. So the way that we do that is we call our quad dl for delay and we just pass it a certain amount of time which here we can pass uh, one eighth of a second. So this uh, division function in the monadic case is basically reciprocal. So this is one over eight. And I believe if I typed everything correctly here, we can zoom out a tiny bit, um, pop back up here to open this up. And then if we go over here and hit enter, if I've done everything correctly, this should now animate. Which is pretty cool. And you can see that this converged uh, so what we want to do now is we want to make this a lot larger. So uh, for the moment, let's go up here. And just, just so that we, before we get into the full animation here, this is basically the entire code that we need to get uh, the game of life up and running. So we need one function in uh, life uh, in order to initialize our board. Then we need one line or one function to get our iteration. So this is typically, like I said before, what APL is referred to as the one line game of life. Uh, but really, in order to sort of get the pictorial version and to animate this, we need a couple extra lines. So I think it's a bit generous to say that we need a single line of code. However, this is impressive that we can get this animation up and running this quickly. Um, so what we're going to do here is let us uh, go to life, and we will change this to 125. And now we want to open this up again. We want to zoom out a ton drag this over and let's zoom out some even even some more and then we're just going to let this run for a tiny bit at the end here and if i now run the animation line this should update and it's going to look awesome So this is pretty mesmerizing if you ask me in arguably one line of code, arguably uh, three to four lines of code, we've built up this very mesmerizing organic Conway's game of life. And I highly encourage you to download Dialog and download the Ride editor. I will leave links in the description down below. And uh, I'll also leave a link to uh, the GitHub code so that you don't need to type this out. You can just copy and paste if you want, but it's pretty cool to play around with this. And uh, I've been messing around with this for about a week now. And I think it's just so awesome to show how powerful APL is. And you don't even need to import a graphics library or anything like this to get it working. You just need to store things to uh, a, a matrix or sort of nested character array, and then this is gonna update in the uh, editor window, which I think is super, super cool. So I'll let this run for a couple more minutes. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, feel free to share with a friend. And also too, apparently 80% of folks that watch my videos aren't subscribed. So think about subscribing if you wanna see more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.